Marsha Televeste. Dave brought the front door with him today. Yeah. That's far enough. I want to spit on you. <laughs> Communicate, don't irrigate. You just put it a little closer and straight on. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, dear. Ah, uh, yeah. Wendy mentioned about Gary Morgan. You actually should be here. I don't know of another prophet in our nation that brings what he brings. Um, and uh, we are blessed that the Lord deposited him in our nation from Wales and uh, that he, he's carrying something very different from the normal run of the prophetic. So I'd encourage you to be here and to be in prayer um, not so that you can get a word of prophecy. You can get a word of prophecy, but you pick up something from people. You pick up something. You absorb something of them into your life. If you give them attention and the honour that's due to them, you actually pick up something from them. So I'd really encourage you to do that. Ah, well, today I have a very broad message. Broad in this fact that I want it to be personal and practical, but I also want it to be corporate and spiritual. And that's not easy to do, and it's not even easy to hear. So just bear with me, eh? Um, firstly, I want to read uh, a part of a um, part of a, a message that was spoken by an American president. I think it was Roosevelt. Like. A long, long time ago. But I think it's relevant today. If I can get this stupid thing. There we go. So listen to this. It says, It is not the critic who counts. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, yeah. whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again and again. Because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But he does actually strive to do the deeds. He knows great enthusiasm and great devotion. Who spends himself in a worthy cause. Who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold souls, those cold, timid souls, who neither know victory or defeat. That was Theodore Roosevelt many years ago, and it's marked down as one of his greatest speeches. It's the one in the arena. It's the one who dares to do. It's the one who has the guts to go after. And all the armchair warriors can sit and spit. But they don't count. It's the guy who had a go. The man in the arena that we all make fun of. Whatever that arena may be, be it politics or missions or business or making a movie or buying a house or writing a book or building a cathedral, it's the one who's in the arena doing the stuff. The one who actually made the decision 
to get in the arena. He had to enter in. He had to make a choice, a decision, and there came a point of no return. As he, <coughs> as he considered the pros and cons, there came a tipping factor that empowered him to not just totter at the threshold, but to actually step on through the threshold into the arena where he knows full well criticism, negativity awaits, but decided it was worth it anyway. He found himself in the arena for better or for worse. Ever been there? <laughs> that arena in life opens up to you because the one who is now being watched is you in the arena. You're the one now whose face is marred with dust and sweat and blood because you were attracted to a specific outcome and you decided to go over the threshold and into the arena of life. Today, that's the personal bit for you. Personally, you step into an arena, <coughs> a threshold. There's just a section of wood or stone underneath the doorway. It's a place of entry. It's a beginning point. It's a point where you start to experience something that you have not experienced before. It's a day when you decide to do something. You are standing on the brink, at the edge, at the verge, at the doorstep, at the gate. And you will either go through and do it or you will shrink back, you sook, and decide, no, that's not for me. Now, there are some doors you ought not to pass through. But there are some doors that are calling you and you should walk across the threshold of that door. I want to talk to you about a few things today. Wendy mentioned in passing last week about the threshold and it caught my heart and it caught my attention. Today is the day where you step across a threshold, according to the Jewish calendar, into a new year. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad the old one's gone? I'm not waiting until December 31. I'm thankful for the year. I'm thankful even more so that it's almost done. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'm looking forward to a better shot next year. But at the threshold, there's often a hovering. There's a hovering at the threshold. You know, would I or won't I? There's a wooing because the arena is calling you in. There's a wooing at that threshold. Uh, but there's also conflict at the threshold. So what are you going to do? Some doors you should not walk through. They weren't yours in the first place. You just got jealous of somebody else who was in there and thought you'd have a go. Well, your face will be full of dust and sweat and smelly blood in no time at all. It's enough if you're called in there. Find another one that you are called to. Every threshold you go through is not good and godly. Sometimes there's a tipping point into sin. But that's not what I want to talk about today. It's a whole other subject for a whole other time. So what is it? that you have been contemplating. Nobody's been contemplating anything. What is it that you have been contemplating, considering, 
thinking about, wondering if you should build that house, if you should take that trip, if you should do, if you should go, if you should become. <coughs> what is it? Are you at the doorway? You may go through or you may not. Whew. God marks thresholds in your life. You come up to the threshold and it's a marker in your life. God marks thresholds. Whether you go through or not, there's a mark. He aligns with thresholds. In his word in Ezekiel, nobody ever reads Ezekiel. It's full of spooky stuff. It's an amazing book. Oh, my goodness. I challenge you to read it and not spin out. But God makes Mark's thresholds for when his glory lands and when his glory departs. Let me just, this is more corporate. As I told you, it'd be kind of like whatever. See, a threshold is God's reference point as well as your reference point. I'm in Ezekiel chapter 10, and it's about the glory of the Lord. <clears throat> and unfortunately and sadly, it's about when the glory was leaving and lifting. The glory was going, but we'll see how it hovers every point at the threshold before further withdrawing. It's withdrawing because the people have given themselves to idolatry and to the worship of other gods and uh, are full of sin, and so the glory was departing. But each time it's marked, the exit is marked by a threshold. And I'm in... Verses 4 and 5, as all the prophets already have opened at that. It says, And then the glory of the Lord rose from above the cherubim. The cherubim were over the mercy seat, you'll remember. And so there's the cherubim over the mercy seat at the very center, the very pivotal point, the, the depths of God's love and grace. There the glory of the Lord is. And it rose from above the cherubim and moved to the threshold of the temple. So the glory is moving out. And where's it going to hover and stop? It's going to stop at a threshold. The cloud filled the temple. And the court was full of the radiance of the glory of God. One would think they would repent, lest it go further. And the sound of the wings of the cherubim could be heard as far away as the outer court, like the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. So there's this going from the very center where God has lived and dwelt and, and, and the mercy seat and the cherubim. And now he can't stay. So he moves. And he stops at the threshold. Maybe I won't have to go any further. Maybe the people will see the glory moving. And maybe the people will repent. And I won't have to go any further than the door of the temple. But we read on quickly. And I'm now in verse 18. And the glory of the Lord departed from over the threshold of the temple. And stopped above the cherubim, and while I watched, the cherubim spread their wings and rose from the ground, and as they went, poo, the wheels went with them, and they stopped at the entrance to the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the Lord, God of Israel, was above them. So now it's gone from the door of the temple to the gate, to the east gate. 
It's going further afield. But again, it stops and it hovers at a threshold. A threshold is a hovering place, whether it's for you personally or whether it's for us as a church corporately. There's a threshold. There's a hovering place where decisions are made. Yes, or not so fast. It's a hovering place. And so now the glory has gone out as far as the gate. I don't know about you, but I read this yesterday and I went, oh, my God, this is tragic. This is tragedy. This is the worst thing. This is Ichabod. The Lord has departed. This is no. Do not pass us by. You know? And then further on in that same chapter we read, In verse uh, 22, then the cherubim with the wheels beside them, the wheels, a whole other thing, don't go there, (sighs) spread their wings and the glory of the God of Israel was above them and the glory of the Lord went up from within, went up from the gate into the city and stopped over the city, went further afield. And then it went to the mountain east of the gate. And the Spirit brought me back to the exiles in Babylon. And this was a vision that Ezekiel had. <sighs> Amazing to me how the Lord understands us personally and we come to a place where we hover before we decide to go in. And it's a place of considering. It's a place of fear. It's a place of will we or won't we? Well, the Lord marks these places, all those threshold places. Thank God for chapter 47 of this same book. Thank God that doesn't end there because... Ezekiel sees a day when it will return to the threshold. And Ezekiel 47.1 says, The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple. Woo-hoo! The water's coming back. Life is coming back to the temple. Because Ezekiel is seeing a future redemption. Is everybody with me today? You're really quiet. Are you okay? Okay. Thank God that the glory is going to come back. And it's going to come back in exactly the same way that it left through the same process, starting at the Mount of Olives and coming back down the hill through the city to the east gate, to the temple door, going through the threshold of the temple door and the Lord himself, who had come that journey on a donkey thousand years later, is now there where the cherubim had been. Jesus himself, and that's when the water comes out from under the threshold of the temple at the very altar. Are you with me? Okay, Roy, you should lighten this up. No, no. Are you with me? Thresholds. God marks them. He's got them marked in your life. And he marked those thresholds so that when the glory came back with Jesus on a donkey from the Mount of Olives, trotting down the Mount of Olives, I've been to the Mount of Olives, I sat near one of those olive trees with Dave. (coughs) I just went, wow, I see the city. I see where Ezekiel's glory that he beheld was above the city. And it comes back. And we could linger on this point forever, but we won't because we talk about thresholds. I just got a bit lost. Is that all right? 
<sighs> but there are thresholds in the economy of God. Uh, there's a wooing power that draws us at the threshold, that calls us in. That it's wooing us, it's calling us, it's beckoning to us to come. It's wanting us to be part of something bigger than what we have currently experienced. It's a wooing factor. Oh, you've been contemplating and that tipping factor is about to tip you over the threshold. I will. I, I won't. I, I, I can't. I can't. I want to. I dare I. Maybe. Maybe not. Hmm. The tipping factor of what you are wanting to gain or what you are needing to resist is a balancing act. One of the words for threshold, as you read the scriptures, one of the other words that's used for threshold is the word storehouse. I thought, that's crazy. They're two entirely different things. Why is one of the words the storehouse? Whew. It seems strange. But the storehouse is like an invitation into the goodies that are reserved for you after you go through the threshold. And so that's why it's sometimes known as the storehouse. It's what you're going to enter into. It's what's available to you after you've entered in through the threshold. You've gone through the door. And so the word storehouse is used often interchangeably with the word threshold. <sighs> so what's been stored up for you on the other side of the threshold? What's in the arena for you, apart from the blood and sweat and tears? If you don't take the step, you're never going to know. It's like the Northern Territory. You're never, never going to know if you never, never go. Excuse me. I do that for effect. Uh, See, there's a different environment on the other side of the threshold. In the winter time, it's cold outside, but as soon as I walk in through my front door and I cross over the threshold, I know it's going to be at least 26 degrees. Ramp it up because I don't like the cold. So there's a different environment when you cross over the threshold. Dave and I, we stepped over a threshold into missions back before most of you were born in 1970. Wow. And God marked that. That's a mark. We entered into an arena that made us who we both are today, for better or for worse. We were just built to be there. It influenced our family line. It was a storehouse of unique and extravagant experiences. We tasted new things. Food, new cover culture, new language, climate, abundance of lack and abundance of stuff that was in the storehouse that we would not have tasted had we not stepped over the threshing floor and been invited into a new storehouse, a new arena. But also... <coughs> Also, at the threshing floor, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of conflict. <laughs> there's a lot of conflict. There's the do and the don't. 
the things that we regret that we didn't do that we should have done. Like the cemetery that I drive past nearly every time I come to church, uh, every time actually because I come the same way and the cemetery doesn't move, so every time. <laughs> and, and that is full of so much potential, so much potential. Oh my goodness. If you want looking for potential, go to the cemetery because that's where you'll find it. But potential without intent is of no use whatsoever. I see the most, the people with the greatest potential, I think they're a bunch of useless drips because there's no intention to do anything with the potential that God has given to them. And, and, and so there's thousands of books that weren't written, there's movies that weren't made, there's homes that weren't built, there's, there's lots of stuff going on there because at the door to your arena, at the threshold into your storehouse, there's conflict within you and outside. Now, the conflict within you, you know about, but there's also conflict from outside. Genesis chapter 4. You all know this, and we won't go into the story, but I'll just mention it in passing. Chapter 4, verse 7. The Lord says to Cain, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. At every threshold, there are angelic forces and there are demonic forces. There's angels there that are saying to you, this is not your, this is not your threshold. Get back. Your motives are wrong. And they're, they're there to guide you. And if it is your threshold, there'll be demonic forces there, crouching, waiting to pounce. That's the posture of crouching. It's of something waiting to pounce. Now, the Lord says, sin is crouching at your door. It's crouching. Not always conspicuous. It appears much smaller than we think. It's actually deceptively small. You don't see elephants crouching very often. You know? But it's there and it's crouching and it's waiting. It's deceptively small. But it's there to pounce because it knows of the goodies in the storehouse once you go through the threshold into the promises and purposes and the destiny of God, knowing full well that you are now in the arena and you are now the conspicuous one who everyone's going to go, well, I didn't do very... It's you now. Suck it up. You went through the threshold and that was the price. But there'll also be the joy and the pleasure of romping around in there and finding what you could not have ever found had you not gone through that jolly threshold. <coughs> if you do what is right, you'll do well. Stuff is crouching at the door. Stuff like anger and depression is crouching at the door, but you must master it. Fear is at the door of your threshold. Past failures are at the door of your threshold. That's why it's easier for young people to go through a door into a new experience because they haven't accumulated enough failures to make them stop and think yet. Hallelujah, I say. We oldies, we go, mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> but you'll never, never know if you never, never go to the never, never. So past failures, selfish ambition crouches at the door, pride, wrong motives, but you must master it, the scripture says. 
The Lord said, decay not, you're out. He just said, master it. Master it. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Because the threshold is a marking place where you master. <sighs> and if you don't master it, your, your threshold will actually turn into a stumbling block. And you'll stumble around in your arena. See, how you begin the journey is often how you continue the journey. As you cross over, as you encounter the Lord, it's the way you express him. How did you encounter the Lord? That will be your chief means of expressing the Lord. And it all happened at the threshold of you wanting to experience something of the Lord. You wanted to encounter him. So you went through the threshold and said, yes, I will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Come and get me. Shandi Baramandi. <laughs> and you became changed. And how you encountered him is how you express him. And we wonder why there's not a lot of expression because there was nothing much of an encounter at the door and we kind of just stepped over and went, oh, we'll have a look around in here and see what it's like. We'll go down to that Pentecostal church and see if there's anything brewing. And that's probably what you got. Feel a lot of love. No, Justin's here. I'm doing well, Justin. Doing well, mate. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for sending your wife, Justin. You can do that any time. <laughs> the threshold. I was inspired by what Wendy said last week. Are you at a threshold? Are you at a threshold? It might be something big, it might be something very small. It might be like something big, like I'm going to live overseas for the rest of my life as a missionary. That's fairly big. It might be small. I'm going to write a book. Uh, sometimes that can be big too, but mostly it's small. I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy that house. I'm going to... But I'm intimidated. I'm afraid. That stuff that's crouching at the door, you must master it. Had Jesus come back in wondering how he would be received when he brought the glory back that had gone from the temple and he retraced the footsteps of that departed glory on a donkey woo, and came right back in to where the cherubim had been without intimidation regardless of the fact that he knew the crucifixion was close by. That was the arena he stepped into when he crossed over those thresholds. He walked into an arena of crucifixion and he knew it. So, what's going on with you personally today? Thank you for that hand, I see that hand. Thank you for that hand, I see that hand. Thank you, Thank you. don't rush me, don't come... What practical difficulties are you facing as you enter that new venture? Over there. What spirit? It's not just something you're going to do. Sometimes it's, it's allowing the Lord. That's a threshold. Just allowing the Lord to do stuff in your life that nobody might ever know about. Nobody might ever know about it. But you crossed a threshold that nobody saw and nobody knew, but God marked it. God marked it. So what are the practical and spiritual threshold that's facing you right now that you need to walk in? What's the new venture? What's the new hope? What's the new expectation? What past failures do you need to overcome? That sin is crouching at the door. What past failures do you need to overcome that? that? Sorry, what past failures do you need to overcome? I've got a string of them. I have such a big bag of past failures. 
It's just like, poof, okay. That's because I went through a few thresholds. Some I should have, some I shouldn't have. Hence, we have Ishmael's in our life. What do you need to fix before you step across the threshold into the new arena? What do you need to fix? What do you need to put right? What would help you across the threshold that you're holding out on? Let me just give you a few little things about how to approach the threshold and go through. Well, first of all, approach the threshold with prayer. Lord, is this the threshold you want me to go through? I see an arena there that's full of great things but also fraught with difficulties and dangers. Lord, would you show me? (coughs) Would you show me whether or not I should go through that? And the Lord may just steer you away. It's not a cowardice thing to not go through. Sometimes it's wisdom, you know. But approach it with prayer. Also seek counsel. Seek counsel. The scripture says, in the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. So if you're thinking about going through a threshold into a new arena, you better seek some counsel because I know of loads of people who have had 10 years of uselessness in their life because they didn't seek counsel. They knew better than everybody else. They went through and they went all the way around the mountain inside that arena again and again and again. They just kept walking around, walking around, walking around that mountain till they ended up with one leg shorter than the other and they had to get out. So approach it with counsel. Humility is a big thing about a threshold. Often when we're young, it's, yee Grandma, let's go. But you're entering an arena that you've never been in before. So approach it with humility. Mark it. Mark the day. Mark it, for it will surely mark you. So mark it. And give thanks to the Lord, even if it is an annus horribilis. Give thanks to the Lord that he's allowed you to come to a threshold and with the wisdom, grace and humility that you're going to walk over it and not stumble through it into an arena because when you're in the arena, you become the target. Hallelujah. Is that helpful? Okay. Well, we should wrap it up about there. I think we should just sit for a minute. You get an early mark today. We should just sit for a minute and you contemplate. Am I at a threshold? Am I heading towards a threshold? What is the threshold? Recognise that God will mark it. Recognise that once you're in that arena that you will be noticed. You may be successful in there, you may not, doesn't matter, but you had the guts to go through because it's not the man sitting on the couch. It's not the feeble soul who never does anything. It's the one who has the dare to do, the guts to go. But just, con- just consider for a moment what threshold. I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds is a long time. We'll call it quits there. I want today, I'm going to ask Dave, would you shift? Can you, could you do that? Or um, Jaden, could you, could you shift the threshold to over here? <coughs> Just over here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I want today that 
for those of you who feel you're at a threshold and you've been fumbling, that, that you might make a commitment to the Lord today to go through that threshold and give it a go. See what the Lord has for you in that arena. Um, so if you would like prayer for that, you could come. But I'd also like to invite you <coughs> to actually having... Whoops, let's go this way. Actually having had prayer to physically cross over the threshold so that you're actually doing a physical act that you have something prophetic within your own soul to encourage you to move into the new arena. So that is there for you to actually go through. Nobody needs to know why you're going. Nobody else's business. I don't even care why you're going. Just have a good romping time while you're in there. That's what I would say. So, so while I pray, you can come. Father, or not. Father, I pray today that you mark thresholds for us and you mark us at the threshold. I pray for the word that's gone forth today that it will not return void but will accomplish. I pray for courage for those who are thinking about going through a threshold, that they would go through it with confidence, go through it knowing that you have called them into an arena that they've never dared to go into before. I pray that they would go through. I pray that your presence would be with them and that you would give them peace and joy. And Lord, I pray that, that timid souls might find within themselves the courage to stand and say, I'm going to do that thing. I'm going to do that thing that I've been putting off. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Well, you might not do it all that well, then who cares? But you did it. You did it. And your critics will always have something to say, but you don't care because by now you know that the Lord is with you. So, Father, I just pray for these ones and ask that you would move in hearts today, bring them to a place where intimidation and fear just drop off and actually walk through a threshold into a new arena, a new storehouse in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So you can come if you would like prayer for that. And then you can go walk through the door. Don't knock it over and don't all rush through. It's not flimsy, but it's not built for you to play footy yet. So come and I'm going to pray.